Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we are gonna be doing a tutorial on my nativity scene cup, or I guess like the Oh Holy Night cup. Uh, this is one of my most favorite designs. I got this in as a custom order, I believe last Christmas it was. And I got super emotional when I was designing this cup because I was listening to like every version of Oh Holy Night. It's one of my most favorite Christmas songs ever. And I just really connected with the lyrics and with my faith while I was making this cup. And so for that reason, this is definitely one of my most favorites. I really hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I will have links down below for almost all the products that you see used in this video, along with a couple discount codes for you guys. And I think that's about enough for me. Oh, also down below, you'll find links to our Flint Sisters community group. That is my Facebook group for all of you guys. And it's the best place for you to connect with me, ask questions and connect with other members of the Flint Sister community. It's a very helpful group. We have a lot of fun in there and I hope to see you there. So let's go ahead and get started. so as usual we're gonna start off with a fully prepped and sanded cup I just went ahead and sanded it really quick to scuff it up I washed it with some acetone and then I spray painted it with a matte white spray paint once that's all dry we're going to use some one and a half inch blue painters tape and I'm going to wrap it around the bottom of the cup about three inches from the bottom is how high you'll want your tape to come this design works best with a straight or skinny design cup, but you could easily pull this off with a traditional style tumbler or a curved tumbler as well. So once I've got my tape on there, I'm going to freehand the mountain range silhouette. This one is super easy. If you guys wanted to reference a mountain range silhouette on your computer or something to get an idea of the shape, but you just kind of want to draw squiggly lines in like a hill shape <laughs> all the way around the cup with a pencil. And then we're just going to run our craft knife along the line that we just drew. You'll want to kind of rotate the knife in your hand as you're going along these lines so it's not like totally perfect. You also don't want to dig your knife in too deep, so don't press too hard. And then make sure you're only removing the bottom part of your tape to leave the silhouette of the mountains exposed. And this is where we are going to be painting our blue paint uh, for the mountain line. I'm gonna add a little bit more masking tape to the top of this line here, and then I'm gonna cover the rem remainder of our cup with saran wrap. This is just a quick and easy way to mask off the rest of the cup without wasting a lot of painter's tape. And then I'm gonna take this outside and I'm gonna spray just the top of my mountain range with Rust-Oleum two times ultra matte true navy. Now you'll see when I'm spraying, I'm just spraying the tops of those mountain tops along the tape line. You're going to want to spray short, quick bursts of spray paint, and that's going to give you a nice fade with your paint, as you can see here, and really light handed on this one. That's all the paint that you're going to need. Next, I'm going to reverse weed the silhouettes for our nativity scene. I'm using Oracal 651 for my stenciling vinyl. You could use uh, removable vinyl or stenciling vinyl if you like that better. I just happen to have a lot of this, so that's what I'm using. And we're only going to weed the actual image itself because again, we're gonna be using this as a stenciling for paint. So you'll just remove the image itself and leave all the surrounding parts of the vinyl there. So you'll wanna give yourself plenty of room to do this on your vinyl when you cut it out. All right, and now we are going to create the uh, second silhouette for our, like, I guess our landline would be, I don't know what you would call this, but we're gonna run our tape along the bottom of the cup again. Make sure your blue paint from the mountains is fully dry before you move on to this step. 
And before you draw out what will be the landline silhouette, you're going to want to kind of see where you should start it in relation to where that nativity scene is going to come up, you know, in relation to the mountains and stuff. So really kind of take your time, make sure you're not making the landline up too high or too low. And we're just going to sketch that out with pencil like we did with the mountains and then run our knife along that line. And then we will remove the bottom por uh, portion of that tape. Okay, and I'm also going to mask off the rest of the top of the cup with some saran wrap. And then I'm going to use gloss black spray paint to spray that bottom landline portion. You're also going to want to spray the very bottom of the cup as well. I like to use gloss black paint for stuff like this because I think it just looks better under epoxy than a flat black. It's just like a deeper black to me. Then I'm going to remove my tape here from this landline and then we're going to apply our stenciling for the nativity scene. You'll want to trim your decal as close to the bottom of that image as possible. And then you would just transfer that decal onto your cup like you would any other decal. Now you want to make sure that you line this up as well as you can against that line on your black landline. Don't worry about getting it completely flush with that line because we can fix that later. So you're just going to kind of want to line it up as well as you can. All right, and then once you've got that on there, I'm just going to color it in with my Arteza acrylic markers. I'm just using the black one. I'll have a link to where you can get these markers down below. And I love using these acrylic paint markers to fill these in because I don't have to mask off and spray paint again. It's a lot easier to control my flow of paint and where I'm coloring in and also know for sure that I've got every part of my stencil colored in nicely. All right, and now once I've got everything colored in, I can go ahead and remove my vinyl very carefully, being sure not to scratch the paint. Your paint shouldn't be pulling up at this stage. That was the importance of prepping our cup from the beginning. So make sure that you do sand your cup before you paint it and you have it thoroughly cleaned with acetone before you spray paint that white base layer of paint. I'm gonna really carefully remove these tiny little bits around the nativity scene there and then if I scratched any paint I'm gonna fix that by spraying a little bit of this blue spray paint onto the cap of my spray paint cup and with an extra fine brush I'm just gonna fill in some of these spots that got scratched I'm also gonna go in with my black acrylic marker and fix any kind of spots that were amiss. I'm also going to connect some of those lines at the bottom where the nativity scene should be reaching that foothill line. I'm going to do the exact same thing for these little three wise men. If you guys are wondering where I got the images for my nativity scene, I found these like a year ago, so I have no idea where I got them. Uh, a quick Google search though, you should be able to find a nativity silhouette pretty easily um, or find one in Cricut Design Space or your silhouette software.
All right, and so once my stenciled paint sections are complete, I'm going to mask those off. Make sure they're completely dry before you mask them off. Um, I just mask it off by wrapping it with saran wrap. And I am going to spray paint the very top of my cup with gloss black spray paint. This is gonna be like the dark part of the night sky. So you're gonna wanna have a soft gradient between the black and the white here at the top. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. So once I did this first pass of spray paint, I didn't like how blunt that line looked. So I moved my saran wrap up a little higher and then I'm just gonna use white spray paint in short, quick bursts of spray once again. And then I'm gonna go in and blend with my black paint as well until I get a fade between that dark sky and the white sky that looks nice. So in order to do this smoothly, again, you're gonna to wanna to do quick, short bursts of spray. And you may need to tilt your cup in you know one way or another to help you get a good angle on the paint all right so once we've got that spray painted we're going to let that dry for about 30 minutes and then we'll move on to our epoxy i've already mixed 30 milliliters of epoxy and i'm going to pour five milliliters of it into one cup and another five milliliters of it into another cup so we should have three small medicine cups of epoxy, two with small amounts, and one with a large amount. I'm going to be mixing indigo into one medicine cup. This is just alcohol ink. Then I'm mixing pool into our largest cup of epoxy, and then I'm mixing stream into another small cup of epoxy. So pool will be our base color epoxy, stream and indigo will be our accent colors. And you're just going to want to quickly mix this alcohol ink into the epoxy. I'm using a coffee stir stick thing. <laughs> I'll have it linked down below in the description box. I really like using these for mixing my epoxy in these tiny cups. And you don't even have to mix it really well. In fact, I would almost recommend not mixing it too well because I like the look of the ink suspended in the epoxy. It gives it a little more depth and I think it's kind of cool. So anyway, I'm going to spread the epoxy that has pool mixed it into it all around our cup. Now, if you wanted to do this with like a red or warm colored sunset, you could definitely do that. You just change the colors to maybe like a red, orange, and yellow, and you would use your lightest color for your base coat epoxy. And you'll want to make sure that you have at least 20 milliliters of epoxy to work with on this coat to ensure that our inks have some room to flow. So if you had a larger cup than this 20 ounce mug that I'm using, you'll want to use more than 30 uh, milliliters of epoxy maybe more like 40 to 60, depending on how large your cup is, okay? So once we have the whole cup covered in this pool colored epoxy, we're gonna kind of let that flow a little bit. Make sure you spend some extra time on that handle if you are working on a cup with a handle. And we really wanna get this coated nice and smooth. All right, and one thing I like to do when I'm working with one of these handles is I like to stop the motor on my turner and really take some extra attention to this handle and make sure I have it fully coated with my epoxy. So I'll go in kind of a systematic fashion, like above, below, to the side, all the way around. Really make sure you've got that coated nicely. Once we've got the whole cup coated in this pool colored epoxy, we're gonna move on into our stream colored epoxy. And I'm just dipping my finger into the epoxy and kind of letting it drizzle along the side of the cup. Notice my turner is not turned on for this step and that's because when I'm draping the epoxy like this, I really like to have more control. And so I just turn the motor off and kind of do my thing. Um, I also don't like chasing after the cup when I'm trying to do this and I have epoxy dripping from my finger. So I kind of just work in sections and turn the cup as I need it when I'm ready to turn it. 
af after I've got all of my stream colored epoxy on there, I'm going to move right into the indigo colored epoxy, which is my darkest color that I'm placing along the top here. Also, you guys are going to notice after you do this that your cup is going to be kind of wavy or bumpy, and that's okay. That'll even out later on uh, in your next coats of epoxy, so don't freak out if you get done with this and it's kind of wavy. That's totally fine. So I'm just kind of sloppily <laughs> throwing it on there, I guess. I really wanted to have like an ethereal look to this sky, which is why I did the colored epoxy plus we'll be doing the drop dyed later on um the reason why i like this is it just breaks up the flow of the alcohol inks that we're going to be dripping onto the cup later and it gives the cup a lot of depth and just i don't know i think it's prettier to do it this way if i were doing like an ocean scene i probably wouldn't be draping the epoxy in there like that i would just be dripping my alcohol inks which would re it'd create more of a wavy look, whereas this is going to create more of an ethereal sky look. Okay, so once I've got all of that colored epoxy in there, we'll be ready to start dropping our alcohol ink. But before we do that, I'm just going to torch my epoxy really quick, make sure I've got any kind of bubbles out. This is also going to help heat up the epoxy again for me, which will help our alcohol ink flow. We want to have a lot of flow with this design. So when I go to drip my alcohol inks, I always drip onto the cup so that the drip rolls away from me. If that makes sense, you'll see if you look at the video how I'm dropping it down and I'm going to start with my darkest color up at the top first and I always tell myself that less is more don't look at this and think oh my gosh I have to add a whole bunch I have to add a whole bunch more just wait and see how it starts to flow together before you add more because you can always add more ink you can't always take it away all right, so once I've got a few indigo drops on there, I'm going to drop a few of the stream. You guys were using the same colors that we had mixed into our epoxy earlier. This is just going to add to the vibrancy of the flow in our colors. Okay, so I'm going to add stream, add a little more indigo where I think it would look nice, and then I'll be dropping some of that pool down towards the bottom of my cup. You want to make sure that your cup is super level and you also want to make sure that you're not adding way too much ink because we don't want that ink coming down too close to the mountain line. I really want to highlight, you know, the brightness on this, you know, the landscape below uh, coming from the star, okay? So it's important to kind of control the flow of your ink and make sure it doesn't go too far down. I'm going to take whatever is left of that colored epoxy and I'm just going to drizzle that in through the alcohol ink that we dropped. And again, that's going to just disrupt the flow of the ink and add a little more kind of interest and depth. Then I'm going to go in with my heat gun and I'm going to kind of blow this around a little bit and get it moving. Make sure you don't leave your heat gun on any one place for too long um, and burn your epoxy because that's dangerous. Uh, so here I am just kind of blowing it around with some heat, getting it moving again. And then we're just going to kind of let it ride. So after you've done this, you're just going to kind of want to walk away. If you want to come back to it after a few minutes and see if there's any kind of weird spots that you want to kind of remove with a gloved finger, or maybe you want to add in a little more of the epoxy that is left in your medicine cups. Again, just to kind of like break up the flow or add some interest or something, you can do that. Um, but don't, don't get too crazy with it. Like less is more. Don't get obsessive about it. Just let it flow. And if you walk away and come back after a half hour, you're probably going to love it way more, um, after you've stepped away for a little bit and let it do its thing. That's kind of how these alcohol ink cups are for me. Like I have to just walk away, let them go. And then I come back and I'm like, Oh, that's actually really cool. So uh, just keep that in mind if this is the first time that you're doing one of these kind of cups. 
So I'm going to let this go for about four to six hours and then I will come back and do a second coat right away. And then I'm going to let that coat dry for 8 to 12 hours and I will do any kind of sanding that I might need to do. Okay, so after I've done my sanding and I've cleaned that up with some dish soap and water, I'm ready to put on my decals. Uh, for the star, I used heat transfer vinyl. This is glitter heat transfer vinyl from uh, Arteza, which I'll have linked down below. And I just found the shape of the star on Google. I will try and find it and link it down in the description box. But again, I found these images over a year ago, so I'm not quite sure if I can find them. Uh, and I'm just gonna put my heat transfer vinyl on with my heat gun. So we're just gonna cut it out with our Cricut like we would any other heat transfer vinyl, weed it, use the transfer tape to you know, get it on the cup, and then I'm using heat from my heat gun to apply it. When I originally did this cup, I stenciled out and freehanded glitter for the star, which turned out to be a total mess, and it was really, really hard. So this glitter heat transfer vinyl made my life so much easier. If you guys want some help with applying heat transfer vinyl to cups, I will have a video linked down below that will explain it in more detail. Once I got the star on there, I moved on to my larger decals. I used vinyl for my little moon up here. I just put a very simple crescent moon out here in the distance. And then this Oh Holy Night decal I put on the back. This Oh Holy Night is a hand lettered design that I purchased from one of my favorite designers a while back. I will try and link that uh, file down in the description box below as well. And again, we're just applying this like any other decal. And there is just something about a white hand lettered sentiment against a watercolored cup design that just gets me in the feels every time. I think it's such a simple but impactful look. I absolutely love it. Okay, so once I got my decals on there, I went in with my acrylic paint markers from Arteza again. Uh, this time I'm using white and the fine tip, and I'm just randomly placing my stars by hand. Once I was done with that, I applied my final layers of epoxy, and we were done. That's it, you guys. It was so simple. I absolutely love this design. I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you again soon. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.